Hi guys, welcome to the WWRE podcast. I'm Mark Picard, I'm Barry Griffiths, digital marketer, and today it's going to be a little bit of a different episode, so I'm going to conduct the mindset uh, series. Um, so there is one subject I wanted to talk to you, uh, a subject that, that I feel you guys could benefit in all of those people that are in the real estate field. Um, it's to talk about transparency. Um, there is one thing I, I've noticed um, surfing on the on the landscape of real estate podcast and, and different syndication platform. Um, I'm noticing um, the I will say the overuse of digital marketer. And let me explain because I am a digital marketer myself, so I want to make sure I, I get my point across. It is okay to um, find support because you are a busy individual, and it is okay to find all the help you need in order to uh, be successful at your business. And if digital marketing is not necessarily a skill that you have, or for example, managing your social media, it's not necessarily a skill that you have, it's okay to seek um, support. However, I'm noticing a lot of digital marketers that pretend they are their client. And this is where I am not 100% okay because I believe that if you want to gain the trust of um, anyone, anyone that you want to do business with, it starts by being transparent. So, I'm seeing it because I'm a digital marketer and I know digital marketer, we have a certain way of communicating, a certain way of phrasing our things and we know how to manipulate social media and the average person necessarily doesn't know that. So I wanted to, to, to warn you about the overuse of a digital marketer that pretend they are you because you are using social media to network, to build your brand, to network, to, to build your credibility in order, most of you, to raise capital, all right? So you need to put yourself in the seat of uh, someone that you're trying to, um, to, uh, to, to bring in, uh, bring on to a deal, let's say. And if that person discovered that he or she was chatting with an assistant that was pretending he or she was you. Imagine the response of, of that potential partner. I personally will, would feel um, that it's a sort of um, betrayal. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something to think twice. Where's the limit between seeking support Okay, for example, in creating content or helping you writing your caption. And it's another thing to ask someone to pretend he or she is you. So be careful with that. The other thing that I want to talk about, and that's a very, very, very tough, uh, uh, very, very um, touchy subject, is fake followers. I'm seeing a tremendous amount of you guys that bought followers. And it's okay, it's a mistake. Uh, it, it starts from a good place. It starts from, you know, wanting some, some credibility um, and it's okay. Um, however, never do that for a different reason. First, it's, cheat First, it's cheating. Let, let's, it's a mistake. It's okay, but it's cheating. It's a fraud. You're not allowed to do that on any platform. You're not allowed on Instagram to buy followers. All right. So anyone, any digital marketer that tells you, hey, do you want to gain more followers, you know, a thousand followers within the next hour? That's a fraud. It's illegal. So the risk of doing that is you might be banned from the platform. All right. And it's going to be very difficult for you to build yourself back up because imagine this. Imagine that you have 20,000 followers. OK. And out of those 20,000 followers, there's 10,000 fake accounts that are following you. So your real following is about 10,000 followers. If your account get gets banned because you broke the guidelines, um, your whole account, you will lose those 10,000 real followers. So the stake is pretty high. You need to be careful with that. Um, the other thing is 
it's not gonna help you to have a big amount of followers because what you want is the right followers you don't want just a huge amount of followers why because you want to be in front of a crowd that will convert into sales so for example if you are raising capital if you are um, a real estate coach if you're selling a course let's say that you are selling a course and you want in your followers a certain amount of potential client you want some leads in there so if half of your followers are fake you are not getting into the in in the front of the uh, the right crowd all right so you would be better off having half of your followers but followers that will you know interact with your content and that leads me to my uh, second point actually having fake followers plays against you okay because what's important is your your um, your engagement rate all right so this is saying uh, the engagement rate is the amount of followers that will interact with your content that will comment likes share and all those things that you know they're not just passive observers so um if you have fake followers, let's say you have, you know, let's go back to the same numbers, 20,000 followers, half of them are fake, the other half is, are, um, are real, and you post something and we see that you have, let's say, you know, uh, 100 likes, okay? Um, if, you, if you take the, um, the amount of likes that you have, the amount of, or the comment that you have, and you divide it by the total amount of followers, that's your engagement rate. Higher your engagement rate is, most likely the algorithm will suggest your content to uh, new people, okay? So if your following is flooded with fake followers, you're playing against yourself because your engagement rate will be low because half of your followers are not real. They're not interacting with your content. So adding fake followers, it's linked to a lack of transparency. You know, imagine to, to do an extreme uh, example, imagine that um, you go in a party, you enter, you know, a party or, or a happy hour that is aiming at networking, you know, a real estate happy hour, let's say that, that, you know, put investors and, and brokers in contact and all. And there's a broker, for example, or whatever, a syndicator that enters with 50 friends. And the guy looks like a big shot and all that. But then when you dig, when you dig a little deeper, you realize that all of those friends are paid. They're not his real friends. So I, would, I wouldn't feel comfortable investing with that person. So usually I'm in a, I'm in a, a place in my life where I can choose with who I'm working with or not and a hundred percent of the time when I have someone coming in and ask me question like how can I grow my following how can I gain more followers how can I look bigger how can I look you know bigger than what I am usually I'm not working with that type of people because there's a sort of lack of transparency so you need to take this whole thing with humility huh? And be transparent with yourself and saying okay I'm starting with 100 followers and I'm building from there because those are real followers you know I'm in the right I'm in front of the right crowd keep in mind that depending on your industry 10% of your following might be interested in what you do and out of that 10% probably another 10% so 1% of your followers might convert and I said might convert into sales so be aware of those numbers all right when you go on social media transparency is the key always honesty humility and this is my episode about mindset slash digital marketing because I feel that um, digital marketing when you develop your own brand when you are your own brand is very linked to life coaching I'm a life coach as well so uh, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can hit me on, on, on Instagram. You can DM me. If not, my website is www.stupidsimpledigitalmarketing.com. Uh, if you have any question, just DM me. Have a good day.